number of years ago, the mother of my son, her mother, which of course technically I guess you'd say was my mother-in-law, had a gentleman friend, and this gentleman friend professionally was in America a chef. He was very talented and very skilled in one of his specialties was to make, was to create ice carvings that he would put in the dining hall of the place that he worked. And he would make different ice carvings. He would take huge rock ice and form out of this rock, rock ice various statues. He was very, very talented in this regard. At one time, we as a group of family went to where he was entering. He had entered one of his carvings in a contest where there were those who did this ice sculpturing. And there must have been 20 or 30, or there, I can't remember, but that, at least that many, of these ice carvings in this place, and it was very cool there, of course, from the ice, but they were keeping it cool. The air conditioning was exceptionally cool and kind of cold. You had to wear a wrap because it was cold. And all of these different formations that the, the, of the entries of all of the various ice carvings, can you get the picture? You get the idea, if you've ever seen an ice carving, you know, some of them are, when they're very, know what they're doing, are quite good. And there were houses and castles and <laughs> porpoises and seagulls and eagles and people and children, all kinds of ice carvings all formed, you see, for this occasion and only had a limited existence for it was only for this occasion. And of course, not too long later, they all returned huh, to that out of which they were fashioned and formed. Simply the water. Hmm? Now look at that. Here all of us are sitting here. In a manner of speaking, we're all just formed and fashioned out of that same substance, universal consciousness, universal being. Shot different sizes, different shapes, etc. And all of us will eventually return, huh? Just like the shape, just like the ice carvings, to this very essence out of which we are fashioned. The mind is that which fashions and holds together this body with which we are identified and considering ourselves to be. Now if we could imagine those ice carvings being put into cold water and then those that would say porpoises or fish and there were those kind fish and porpoises swimming off. Huh? <laughs> well, we kind of swim off. We move about in this universal substance 
out of which we're fashioned, and we don't usually recognize, we don't see that this consciousness out of which we're fashioned and formed by the mind is a, a neutral expression in the very space itself that is filled also with consciousness. If we don't have the spiritual sight to see, if we can't, let's put it the other way around, if we, if we did have the spiritual sight to see, there could be the occasions in which we can actually see that the very space itself is itself formed as a neutral expression of the consciousness, the universal consciousness, out of which everything else is formed as a physical manifestation. You see, the truth is there's nothing but consciousness. Everything is consciousness. It's not consciousness and whatever else is appearing. Everything that is appearing is consciousness appearing as that which is appearing. And we are the consciousness. We may stay for a period of time identified with the, manifest, the manifested appearance of a physical entity and believe that this physical entity, this body expression, is who and what we are. Well, that's who and what we appear to be. And even the history that pertains to this body which is actually the mind, the record of experiences that have occurred to this body from the time it came into manifestation as an infant, a baby, and all of the experiences that it has undergone, the body, and all of the events as it grew that have been recorded in the brain and central nervous system of the body, all of which we've taken to mean me. But the truth of the matter is, that's just who we think we are. That's just mine. That's not who we are. Now the big question may be, and in my, work, my view is, which is the most important? to be caught up and identified with the form that, we're appear to, that we appear to be, living from that, the basis of the mind and all of the events that we are identified with that appear to be our life and the resulting identification with that, it, the nature of which It's suffering. It's also pleasure, sure. But all of the trials and tribulations, all of the difficulties, all of the seeming limitations, all of the desires, unfulfilled as well as fulfilled, and the pursuit of the desires for more and better and different experiences in what we call life, and our joy when we achieve, and our disappointment when we're unable to achieve, all of that we call the drama of the experiences that we undergo. And that, that in itself is just called life. Now the fact is, as long as we're identified with this being that we think we are and all of the dramas that this being is involved in 
and living at the effect of whether we recognize it where everyone recognizes it or not and to what extent we're able to deeply ourselves recognize it it's not always pleasant there is some of course there is a lot of pleasure in it but when you have pleasure mixed with displeasure could you call that pleasure? <laughs> well, it's according to you whether you are just holding on to the pleasure and attempting to avoid the displeasure, then we can call it pleasure. But pleasure, in my view, mixed with displeasure is displeasure. Just see it. I'm, you can say, well, you're being pessimistic. I'm like, I'm a little more <laughs> optimistic than you are. In my view, the main thing is to recognize that this self that we are meditating as an entity living in time and space and that, in fact, is what's happening. Consciousness is meditating the notion of being an individual living in what appears to be time and space. And as long as identification with that is occurring, there's the forgetfulness of the actual being, the pure being, pure consciousness itself, that is actually meditating this body-mind configuration and identified with it. But when there's the awakening to this whole scenario and the insight and the seeing is occurring as to the true nature of the being that we are, which is this universal awareness, in which all of this is appearing to occur and we're not identified with the form of things but fully cognizant from and as the formless awareness of things remaining in the formless awareness of things as the formless awareness then it doesn't matter what the configuration of the form of the things happens to be, we're not affected by it. And that is what's called enlightenment. To me, and shared by Bhagavan Ramana, and shared before him by Buddha, and shared by Jesus Christ and a number of nannies, enlightened ones, the great beings in history, that's the most important realization for us to have. That awakening to the true nature of the being that we are, which is faceless, formless, timeless, spaceless being, awareness itself. So you see, enlightenment comes for those of us who are ready, which those of us, you might say, who are ready to go home. It comes to those of us who've reached that place in our adventure of one lifetime after another to where we've reached the place where finally we look and see and tell ourselves the truth I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So, well, I'm not sick and tired yet of being sick and tired. I mean, I still got some energy left. I mean, I'm not tired yet, but I still like to have the enlightenment. Well, that could happen. And so, you know, it could happen. In other words, you could win. I don't know what they have in Europe, 
But in America, they have lotteries. I think they, they have the Irish sweepstakes. That's still a lottery. I don't know, is it? So you could win that. You could win the lottery, but what's the chances? Wonder what the odds are of winning the lottery. You could win it, you see. So if you're not actually working to withdraw your attention from the source, in, I should say into the source, out of the mind, dropping identification with body-mind, and withdrawing attention into the source, if you're not into that place yet, if you've not yet come to that place where you're really into awakening to the dream and recognizing that this dream can be a house of horrors, yes, it can be a house of, of, of a, you know, a love tunnel. But watch out, you don't fall out of the love boat. <laughs> Are we getting the point? Yes. Yeah. Here at Aham, we are sharing how to awaken to the dream and be free of the dream of birth and death so that you will live in the pure awareness of being as the pure awareness of being and allow the karma that has been set in motion, which is the conditioned patterns of the mind, to complete themselves on the body in this lifetime. In this lifetime. If we use this inquiry process that is so simple and so profound, so auspicious, we can melt this ice carving that we are very graciously and easily and merge with this allness of being out of which we are, appear to be fashioned form right now in this instant in this moment let go of any sense of I but this awareness that we are that is prior to it has no contraction in it has no otherness in it it is the allness of being it is freedom, peace, joy. It is happiness itself. Abide in it this moment and forever. And be happy. Namaste. Namaste.